and uh, I'm handing the meeting over to you. Okay, we'll call this uh, meeting to order. I got my gavel. Doug, you need to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, I do? Oh, lucky me. You're the Sergeant at Arms. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, a nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ready then. Okay, roll call. First. Here. Nine. Here. Duff. Here. Okay, Mike's absent. Uh, highlighter and a pen. What's that? Oh, sorry. Um. All right. Um. We're gonna proceed with uh, a, few, a few short of the load here. Um. I've been, I'm sorry, we got to uh, call the public. So do we have anybody from the public here? I don't think so. Uh, nope, not at the moment. Okay, so we'll move on to the budget process. Um, I've asked Mike Kondak to join us uh, for education as much as anything else, especially for me. Um, I want to make sure that we follow the right process and we're following the rules. And so um, Mike, I... I have put together that spreadsheet you gave me. I can share that if you wanna to talk to that as far as part of your explanation, then we'll get into the, we'll get into the current budget. Is that all right with you? How would you like to proceed? Did, did you share that with the uh, other other two? No, Mike, I'm, I'm delinquent. Um, let me, well, uh, I I'm just gonna put, I was gonna put it on the screen here. That, that's fine. If they already have their PDFs so though, they can. They can use those either either way is good for me. Can you guys see that? Yeah. yeah. All right. Can you still see it? Yep. All right. Nope. Nope. Not anymore. Nope. Okay, I gotta move it back to where it was. All right. Okay, Mike. Now you can see it. Sure can. All right. Um would you like me to preface it with general remarks or would you like to just? Yeah, you know, I just, you know, I, I, you and I talked about the cycle. I want to make sure that everybody on the board understood the cycle and then we can kind of get into the nuts and bolts of this, this budget and how we add and delete and some of the things we just don't have a real, we don't have that much input to as far as changing the numbers. So, uh, I mean, okay, Mike, what I like to do is every early March, I'll give the chairman's chairmen, chairpersons of the various boards and committees a, um, a PDF, a printout of uh, activity through February, along with <clears throat> a brief letter that describes the process. Um, I, I also copy or CC the uh, council liaison. In your case, it would be Bob Allen. And then kind of put myself at your disposal if you want me to share that with everybody on the board. If you want me to be at a specific meeting, if you want to uh, uh, sit, on, sit down and be one-on-one on, one on one as you did yesterday, well, we can do various and sundry things. I congratulate you. I, I find it commendable that you're uh, you know, kind of coming forward and trying to get a good understanding of the process because uh, it, it, it's, it's not all that clear. I mean, the ultimate goal, of course, is that we go through or you would, a couple of meetings you've got, you would have in theory then your March, April and May meetings to uh, uh, deliberate and take action, try and understand things. The idea is that I will present to council sometime next week uh, in the aftermath of their meeting, a working budget. And by that, I mean uh, basically um, input from me, uh, from the various boards, commissions and uh, numerous other sources reviewed by our administrator and then I just lay out for council kind of highlights. Nobody takes any action. Nobody asks any questions. Nobody does anything really until uh, the work session, which is two weeks after the council meeting. This year we have May 12th and we have May 26th. May 12th for the meeting, May 26th for the uh, work session. 
the goal is to adopt a budget. You, by law, you have to adopt a budget before the beginning of the new fiscal year, which is July 1. And council typically does that at their meeting, uh, the, at their June regularly scheduled meeting. So with that, I mean, um, what I'm looking for, there are certain things that uh, I'm, I'm but Oh, okay. I think that was Did the I vice president of uh, something else. Should I continue or was that? A Go ahead. Okay. Um, the water board has two cost centers, what we call an, a, a kind of an arrangement of accounts that are sort of, that have a, a, a commonality to them. One is your board and all of the expenses associated with that. And the other is uh, things associated with Lake Improvement itself. Yeah, there's the water board down below. The Lake Improvement is, is, it has a few more line items and we can go over what those represent in terms of um, you know, what, what's the specific background, what's, what's contained in those uh, and that sort of thing. So if you want me to go through that one by one, we can do that or. Um, well, um... I guess, uh, yeah, let, we should start from the top and go down. Um, hey. The the uh, the point being is May 12th, this goes to the working, no, not May 12th, but the following, I think the following week, it goes to the working council working meeting, right? No, May 26th. May 26th, okay. So at that, that point, you, that will you be the provide it to them over you it present line item by line item. You go through it line item by line item. The entire budget, you know, not okay. just you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That sounds like fun. All right. So okay. let's uh, let's start let's start from the top. Um, I, actually, what I did here is I start I put some things in blue here already that I'm just like uh, thinking a lot of this is carryover, but uh, uh, let's go. So yeah, as far as there's different ways to budget you, in the case of uh, uh, the salaries that includes both the operation of uh, op or using the weed harvester itself. That's Grant McNutt. He'll be with us for another uh, summer or season, I should say. It also includes some DPW labor time, labor costs, because they're the ones that pick up the weeds and um, take care of them or, or put them in the uh, uh, dump site there at Hickory Glen Park. So. Uh, their time is registered in there as well. The only thing I'd be looking for the board uh, or looking for board input on would be the idea that, hey, uh, the consultant last year said we should be speeding up the process or do more uh, in the way of harvesting. Maybe at uh, harvesting and, and, and chemical treatments are not, not diametrically at odds or opposed or anything like that, but Usually the, an increase in one might mean a, a decrease in the other. And of course, every season is different. And, you know, this year is no, uh, is, is not an exception to the rule. So, I mean, what I would do probably was without, without any board input, I probably look at the last year, the year before that or something and come up with a figure that uh, seems realistic. The 6,000 is made up of, as I said, the two components, the DPW and Grant McNutt. And, you, should, you know, it's seasonal, right? So he doesn't begin or the first time I paid him uh, in our current fiscal year wasn't until July. So is he gonna begin early this year? Is he gonna begin uh, typically late in June uh, or, or maybe not even then, maybe even later. So I like that figure, at least for the time being. You'll notice the next figure though is harvester maintenance. That is strictly a labor account, that's DPW salaries. We spent a little bit more time on that uh, just over the past month or so. And you see that the budget has been exceeded. Uh, the original in green in uh, Mike's column there, $3,000. You see the year to date through April is 3,960. So I'm gonna have to A, adjust the budget for this year and then see whether or not after consultation with the uh, uh, DPW, whether something similar will exist last year or whether it'd be more whether the 2019-20 figure would be more representative. That was just a shade under $3,000. So that's kind of on me. FICA, of course, is FICA. That's uh, um, you know the, the, the employer share of uh, Medicare and Social Security on those labor costs. Gasoline, uh, we haven't been <laughs> doing a very good job of that. I think the, the harvester runs on diesel, does it not? Does anybody know? 
I don't know. I, I don't know either. <laughs> anyway, you why know, don't we call of, it fuel? <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Well, I'm relying on people to tell me it's very informal. I mean, we have a, a diesel uh, uh, in our DPW yard. I think somebody just may grab a can or two and just fill it. And, you know, I don't usually hear about it. So uh, whether I can, I can apportion a, you know, it, it's a $500 line item. I'm not going to make Christmas out of it. I, I, it's just one of those things that kind of, it slips through the crack. If we would, would be reporting um, on a more consistent basis, then, then maybe I could fill in the blank there and use that as an expense account. Um, the electric account following, bear with me a second, is comprised of, you know, we have uh, uh, Elmsford and, and, and Terry as our um, uh, augment, uh, augmentation wells currently. And that just represents the electric bills. Um, they can be, you know, again, that's seasonal and dependent on weather conditions. We've had to use them just anecdotally, we've had to use them a lot over the last month, um, I guess, because the lake isn't filling it, to our satisfaction or it needs a little boost or a little help. So in that I get a DTE bill monthly, um, I apportion that cost here. Again, you can see where it looks like it's, it's already overboard for uh, fiscal 21. So the question becomes uh, what it should be for next year. And that's kind of on me. That's not, you know, it's a function of, of electric rates and but more importantly usage. And if the trend seems to be higher, I mean, look at the differential. I mean, uh, the 2019-20 activity, $1,900 and this year already with a couple months left to go in the fiscal year, we're at $6,700. So uh, for example, the Wolverine one, uh, you know, a huge charge in August, big charge here in, uh, uh, April or bigger or whatever. Um, so Wolverine, Helmsford, and Terry. Um, Helmsford, of course, I, I, I'm sorry. We, we, as you know, that's not in service yet. So we're just getting that minimal per month charge that DTE uh, imposes regardless of whether you use a kilowatt or anything. So, but that's where that's, that's comprises that expense. Like okay, Mike. Um, back in the previous year, it was two grand, and it's up to. Yeah, that's. I just pointed that out, and it's it's like whoa. You notice last year's budget though is forty five hundred dollars. Why we came right. in so low, nineteen sixty six again, right. Mike. I think it has to be a function of weather conditions. Okay. And for whatever reason, you know, you, you just make a guess. I think year year over year that one year is not going to be significantly different from the other. Um, none of these are. Uh, uh, actual readings, uh, sorry, none, none of these are estimated readings. We play catch up after a while if there happens to be an estimate. So, um, you know, these are pretty good numbers. It's not something that's, you know, way out of control. Uh, oh, we haven't Mike, had a reading sorry. on this. I just have a question. I kind of missed this. I'm sorry. The electricity, is that for the Helmsford pump to pump water into the lake? Is that what you're mm -hmm. talking about? Yeah, except what I'm trying to say is that the Helmsford pump is not really being used as a lake augmentation pump. Right, the pumps okay. That, the pumps that Terry and Wolverine are, and as a result, that's, that's, that comprises the electrical expense. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I heard what, what was yeah. we were talking about. It just says electrical. That's why I just wanted, I, I, I got some background noise here with some homeworkers. <laughs> All right. So uh, as far as that goes, I mean, should we go back in with five grand? No, and knowing that we've already over budget this. And we've under budget. We, the What's 67 that? is, we've under budget. The 67 is the actual year to date. The 5,000 is what we budget. So that's going to be. Right. I mean, we're, we're, we're over our budget. So that's correct. Um, uh, 67. So should we go in back in at five or should we come in at seven, which is probably more realistic for this year? It, it, it very well could be. Yeah. I mean, it's contingent on what kind of year we're going to have. And what I would do would maybe take the last 12 months, 12, for example, I have through April. So I would maybe use the last two months of uh, fiscal 20, which would be uh, May and June of 2020. And then carry that through April and use those 12 months as being 
that's probably how I would do it. And already, I mean, it looks like, for example, um, uh, let me see if I can get this up here. Bear with me one second. Yeah, in April of 2020, we didn't use anywhere near the amount that we did here in, in uh, uh, April of, of 2021. So could very well be that, uh, that that needs a boost. And again, it's not a function of, it's not anything anybody can, it is what it is. In other words, you're not going to get beat up. Nobody's going to get beat up for incurring expenses that don't need to be, in, that that you have no, no uh, discretion over. I mean, the pumps... Run, unless unless there's some ideas that uh, hey we're overusing it or something like that, but usage is what it is. Rates are what they are, and that's yeah. probably our best means of. Well, I I, I kind of think that we should just put seven grand in there. It's a little bit more than what we got through this. Yeah, through this like system. I say, I'm going to go over the past twelve months. Seven grand okay. may may not be enough. In other words, at at sixty seven hundred dollars, we still got two more months to go, and if we're going to be pretty dry, we need to build up the lake level um, it could go way north of that okay well i'll put this in for now and you're gonna yeah gonna that's what i'm gonna do against the, right. the last yep. action right you are if you want to move on harvester repair and maintenance that would be parts that would be things like um, uh, hose assemblies and that sort of thing um, as i said we incurred some pretty good charges here uh, in, in the fall, then a little bit more here in, in March, but we had to, um, um, uh, expend close to seven or $800, uh, here for some hydro hydraulic hoses in the fall. Now that's another area where I would get with DPW. You see where the figure is 2853. We're just a touch under budget. I'd have to say, or have to find out from them whether the repairs that we've occurred are pretty much going to tide us over for a while or whether there's something looming or whether there's something big on the horizon. So um, I would say the three grand figure is probably good for now, absent any any details in, in, in the areas I just... Uh, okay, well. yeah, because the year the year before we only spent 200 bucks in the same category. Right. right, you are. Budgeted for three and we got it three. I don't, I don't see any reason to change that. Well, we may just just in, if if it turns based out, on actuals. Well, based on the fact that if these kind of repairs tighten us over, mm -hmm. you know, hoses are a big were a big part of it. So, mm -hmm. um, if they're in a good state of repair now, maybe we don't incur that kind of expense. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, we I, I'll do that based on some input from DPW. Now, if you want to talk about dam repair, really, what happened there was that's DPW. If we had incurred any materials cost or equipment cost or something like that, that would be there. Um, the DPW uh, did some work on the, both the berm and the uh, dam repair. And to the extent that it's um, uh, serviceable or in good shape, at least in the eyes of our uh, village engineer, Mike Powell, um, nothing to worry about there. It could have been a big worry depending if the, uh, um, you know, the site was compromised I think what Mike's concern is from time to time, you see a Mike Powell's concern. Um, if rodents or other aquatic, you know, kind of, uh, I don't know, muskrats or stuff, something like that are burrowing in there and, and maybe making it a little flimsy or a little, uh, little unsafe. Uh, basically what we're trying to do is keep the uh, uh, dirt compacted and, and make sure that, uh, you know, the, <laughs> the thing doesn't wash away someday, you know. So you see, we've incurred a little bit of berm repair costs. Four, four, nine, hey, Mike Kendrick, I have a question. Fire away. That uh, Helmsford pump, is that repair happening in 2021 or next year? It doesn't, we were just talking about that yesterday. Um, I'm gonna budget it for fiscal 22 and I'll budget that elsewhere. It'll be a capital project. Oh, okay. And it will be, it will be uh, I think, a charge rightfully uh, borne by the general fund, even though it was at one time a water fund asset. Um, 
but the conversion, you know, kind of helps the general fund going forward or helps uh, the augmentation of the lake going forward, which, which is a general fund thing. Now, if it's, if it's possible that that can be dealt with before June 30, June 30 uh, this year, um, we certainly would go ahead with it, although it is, you know, an unbudgeted expense. So we can make an amendment possibly to take care of that. But for right now, uh, the safe plan is to have that, um, you know, budgeted for 422. Okay. But good question. So under the line item for uh, lake level pump maintenance, um, last year and this year we spent no money. Correct. But we budgeted for four grand. So do we need that four grand in there or do we need to, can we reduce that to two grand or? Isn't that based on the amount of rainfall and how much we have to fill the lake? That's you know, the that electricity really is, part. No, that's not a utility expense. That would be if we incur some expense uh, repairing it. And, you know, we, I guess touch wood, we've been lucky for the last couple of years. I can go back further. The, the $4,500 does mm -hmm. have a justification. Yeah, if over the last couple of years we haven't incurred that expense, I'll put something in there, but probably not anywhere near $4,500 based on, again, review from Andy Stone, if there's any sort of uh, impending repair on the horizon that that's going to have to be taken care of one way or the other that's where we would, we would book that but you're right the likelihood is that, that that's not going to occur and so you'll probably see a reduction wait mike i'm sorry that pump is that just the helmsford pump or does that include a, another one well remember the helmsford pump is out of service that's yeah. what I thought. Okay. Yeah. So I'm in the sorry. event that in the event that we activate it, that would be a capital expenditure. Right. 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 Would, okay. would not be here. This will take care. This would be if any of the existing pumps were to have some sort of a mechanical or or hydro whatever kind of an issue. An issue. Right, right. We would we would expense the uh, parts and repairs and so forth in that line. Okay. So the lake level pump maintenance is just once we if we were to get it back up and running, right? Whenever that happens, that's just a yearly. Mm -hmm you know, adjusted number based on, you know, regular maintenance. There you go. Perfect. Okay. I just, I'm sorry. I just want to make sure. No, good. Okay. All right. Um, Past dump site maintenance, you're going to see a thing called equipment rental. That's for us accountants to, uh, or bean counters, to kind of apportion costs of various equipment to different funds um, without belaboring the point. Like for example, the, the majority of this is, is due to the harvester usage. What we do is we buy a piece of equipment. We don't depreciate it over time, but we do kind of rent it out, if you will, um, when, it's, when it's being used in different cost centers, like the harvester would be here. We have an hourly rate that we use so that we can kind of maintain a log, a record of, of, of hours of usage. So that's not a cash expense. I'm not spending money to rent a harvester or rent anything associated with, uh, you know, the, the lake. That's, that's, as I said, strictly an accounting entry. And, you know, it, it's very much uh, tied to the salary expense that we have for, you know, grant running uh, machinery, grant running equipment. That's by and large where, where you know, but if, if we're using uh, if DPW happens to be using any of their equipment, other stuff, whether it's a truck or what have you, um, for lake improvement related issues, they would expense it there. But that's very rare. So by and large, that's really, the, uh, that reflects the usage of the harvest. Okay. okay. And that, that's, that is what it is. So we don't, we, you know, that, that comes out of this calculation yeah, that you're making. No real really input not from you on, on that. Any, no. uh, anything under our control. Right. Um, uh, well, except, Mike, to the extent that, um, you know, if you know, and if the board has a sense that, holy smokes, this year is going to be, and, and, you know, you don't have enough data, I suppose, to make a really uh, super great decision, but based on what you know, since, you know, the thaw has taken place based on what Paul, Paul Hausler may see in the lake, based on, you know, anecdotal stuff even, um, 
it's like, holy smokes, we're going to be in a world of hurt if we don't, you know, start harvesting like crazy. And if you know that or sense that or have some sort of input in that, then that would increase along with uh, not necessarily grants hourly rate, but the uh, number of hours that he's putting into um, uh, removal of weeds on the lake. So you see where I'm going with that? That's yeah. That to me is the most important thing I can get from a board life. So that, that, yeah, so that goes, that kind of ties into the first one. And that is, you know, how many hours operation drives the, the weed harvesting, um, um, yeah, and absolutely. No, and, no, and, 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 and I don't know about, about prior year. Yeah, I don't know about the rest of, of the board, but I felt like we utilized the weed harvester pretty well last year. I don't see any major changes up or down there. I think we're all pretty happy with um, the results from last year. There's no indication that there's going to be some uh, any particular reason to expect it to change drastically. So I don't see that anything that has uh, input to any of these lines that have input for the hours to the hours, the operation of the weed harvester, I don't think it's going to change from, you know, where we're at right now, uh, year to date in last year. So uh, I don't know about, how do you guys feel about that? Oh, looky there. We got a new guy. You're muted. And Mike, that seems fine to me. Sorry, I'm late to the dance. Um, yeah, it, it seems fine to me as well. All right. Because there's no, there's nothing out there that says we we we're, we got an impending disaster. There's a crazy weed or any more algae than normal. Yada yada yada. So. In which case, I'm assuming that the budget has some flexibility. If there was a disaster, we're not the only committee that's going to be worrying about it. Correct. Mike explained that to me that, you know, the budget for us is what we think is out there. And if we have to go over and it's justified, you know, and it's reasonable, you know, especially yeah. with something like this, it's not like we're running out and spending money just to spend money. Right. It's something that had to be done, sort of like the, you know, the $19,000 in, um, you know, um, rental. Um, you know, that that is what it is. So, you know. right. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mike, did I overrun you there? No, no. Um, uh, we can just move on down if you want. Uh, miscellaneous. Let's see. This year was. See three hundred fifty dollars. I mean, we just put something in there. It was okay. So decals for the lake booths. I don't have any other place to stick that, so I just came up with that. So uh, at least we have an account there or an amount appropriated for, you know, events or things unknown. But in this particular case, it was useful because that's where we put that. Uh, as I said, those lake buoy stickers. If you continue to move down, um, you see fish stocking. That's perennially been twenty five hundred dollars. It changes year over year is the kind of fish that we put in there. Right. Um, it comes from a single source in Emily City. Uh, we did it in the fall, typically, or we do it in the fall, typically. We, uh, My notes say largemouth bass. I, I don't know if that's true or not, but we do maintain yeah. a record of what we've done year over year, uh, uh, going back at least 20 years. So if anybody ever needs to see that or anybody wants to uh, have that at, at their disposal, that's that's available as well. But that's been a static number, like I say, for years. All right. We, um, I put in five, 5,000 here only because, uh, we're going to, we're going to look at consulting with the DNR, possibly doing two species this year. So, um, unless anybody has a problem with that, I want to put in, uh, uh, five grand there. We may or may not spend it, but I want to budget for it. Okay, if we move on down the road there, the Greenway Drain uh, Maintenance Program is done. Uh, we had originally thought it might be around $30,000. It's come in at under 20. There may be a couple of ancillary things that we need to do. They certainly will be done by the fiscal year end uh, and, and certainly would be well, well within that uh, $30,000. So there's a success story there, I guess. 
and uh, you know, and that something comes in under budget, and and uh, you know, uh, it's something that needed attention for you know a good long time now. Okay, oh, so I just 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 for the heck of it, I put in five grand just for like we because we put those kinds of numbers against the dam um, just for continuing maintenance. Uh, I mean, we don't need thirty. But, but that's but do we maintain the greenway drain every year or is this just you know what I mean? No, like, this this is a major refurbishment. Uh, right, but it. it's not something like the dam that that does require maintenance every year. Oh, most you're absolutely right. In other words, this this should tide us over for a good long period of time. Yeah, I just want to make sure we understand it. Whether we put money there or not, not as important as whether or not we understand what's typical of our requirements. Right. So we could lower that down to even like a thousand, right? I, th I think that's more appropriate, Mike. I really do. Okay. Now, um, Mike and I talked about this yesterday. Um, when I um, I sat through some of that uh, um, virtual conference, and frankly, it wasn't all that great, but I did pick up some information on, they have these bags now you could put in the greenaway drain that would like basically capture phosphorus. And I thought that that might be something that we want to look into. I have no idea what the cost, uh, and I don't know how effective they are. But at some point, you know, we want to address the lake. Um, we want to see what we can do about the lake chemistry, and obviously, phosphorus is one of the things that we want to try to control. So, um, Mike, would that go under here, or would that go under like the general projects fund down below? No, I think that the most, you know, you know you've got a, a line item identified as greenaway drain maintenance. I think that's, that would be apropos. I think that's, you and know, I, and, again, and you I have, have no idea what the cost is. And this might right. be something once we identify that we do next year, but that if, if we do spend any money on something like that, it would be here. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, if you're looking at waterfowl, I'm not exactly sure the state of that. I'd have to get back to you on that. We haven't spent anything year to date. Um, and I think that typically takes place right around now. So I'm not sure where we're at, if we've got the, went through the permitting process of DNR. And if I say DNR, don't hold me to DNR. It could be ego. It could be. EEQ, I don't know the difference between any of them, but yeah, it, I'm um, sorry, there terrible. is a permitting process that, I that we have to go through. Uh, I don't know if we still have the opportunity to do that this year, but certainly next year. And I think that 1250 is a appropriate figure. Okay. Um, now, historically what I've done under Lake Restoration Program I have incurred, or I, I put there, all of the costs associate, uh, associated historically with um, aeration. Um, as you probably know, the only thing left now is the electric bills. There are two poles on Wolverine Drive that still have meters on them, and we're paying that, you know, incremental, not incremental, but the, the base charge where there's not necessarily consumption registered. But um, so, it, it, you know, part of this would be a decision as to whether or not to proceed with aeration. Uh, I know you guys still have it on your plate, uh, whether the uh, deep water option is, is still in play, whether we should just maybe um, uh, can the whole program, tell Edison to grab their meters and uh, be done with it. Um, but anyway, uh, I had in there, um, you know, you, there, was, there were some uh, pretty ambitious things, at least as outlined by a memo I had from John Scott. I think it was his writing last year on behalf of the water board. Um, and that had to do with some uh, additional um, uh, studies, uh, some additional, um, uh, you know, that just right. that whole aspect that you guys know a lot more about than I do. Well, was, we're at the point, Mike, where we're not sure um, what the short-term direction of this is, but we for sure aren't going to be going out to get a uh, permit this year, which is 10 grand of that. And uh, at least, 
and we do want, but we feel compelled that we should uh, remove the remove the equipment out of the lake. And I think we yeah. have a quote for around five grand for that. Is that from the pond guy or some other? Yeah, and that's yeah. not. It was fifty nine. Mike Hurst. It was fifty nine hundred. It was fifty nine hundred. Okay. So, um, and then under the same category again, you know, we were looking at erosion. Uh, we were looking at uh, some other things. And now we, we've got some interest in working on possibly dredging and or some other method of leaf removal. Um, for the rest of the board, DPW has been looking at doing some dredging out by the uh, Schenken uh, culvert, which may help with all the other issues that we have over there when it comes to um, flow and algae and everything else. And they have a quote a dated quote now for, for $21,000 or something. So um, along with that, I'd like well, to- what, what, I'm sorry, Mike, to interrupt for uh, the quote to uh, straighten out that shanking too. What's, Is that what you're referring to? The, the, the dredging one that you sent me, what was it? Wasn't that 21 grand? No, if you're talking about the shanking too, the figure we got from American Re Marine was 14,200, which we thought uh, back in the fall when, when that was uh, first proffered, that that was probably a little strong. We might uh, do that for a lot less than that. Okay. Okay. So we might be talking about something around 10. So I well, you know, that, that's the hope. 14.2 yeah. is, is where we're at right now. I don't, I don't know to what extent. Okay, so that, that would make be. that, let's just call that 20. Is that... Where this equipment, if you want, yeah, equipment rental and um, um, uh, the removal of the uh, equipment. Uh, sorry, not equipment rental. The uh, the uh, American Marine thing and the uh, uh, equipment remo removal. If you want to use a twenty thousand dollar figure, that's fine. I'm okay. Okay. With that. Well, I'm just putting it in the notes here, so you know what the thinking yeah. is. Obviously, somebody else is going to approve or disapprove this on the on the lake. Um, chemical chemical side I um, I just put a, a, a little bit of an accelerant in there because I nothing's going down when it comes to anything chemical so that's an excellent point there are so many wacky things going on with supply chains and costs and all sorts of stuff that we're being faced with now that's it's probably not a bad idea so from from the rest of you guys point of view you know, this is, I've been doing a lot of talking here, but does anybody see anything in here or we can come back to this after we go down to the uh, water management piece here. Uh, but uh, I'm thinking about a lot of the stuff that we may be talking about here on may come under board projects. So uh, does anybody have any, uh, any other inputs? Nope. Well, the only thing, Mike, I was going to say is um, waterfowl. Where is that? My x ray vision is not working. At 1250, you know, I talked, and, you know, I've been kicking around the idea of looking into the cost of putting up a couple uh, uh, nesting uh, platforms for the, for the, um, Blue herons. Herons. Mm -hmm. Would it go there or would it go under the projects? Board projects. Thing? Yeah. You know, it, it could go either either place. I mean, it's a general fund expense. We can, you know, um, discuss the accounting of it, but it's it sort of fruit. Uh, I mean, it, that's as good a place as it. So on the so, nesting poles, I don't think it's going to be expensive because I think we might be able to talk somebody to give us a, a couple telephone poles from the utility company. So the, the real cost of that's probably not that high um, as far as, except for getting them in, in, installed. And, and then, so I'm just going to do this for now. Okay. Um, so those numbers put us slight, um, not slightly, you know, well, 
14,000 under last year's budget. And, and larger than that, that's driven by the uh, greenaway drain thing. That's over and done with. We've incurred that expense. We're not going to incur it going forward. Correct. All right. So down to the board project, itself. Contracting services, yada, yada, yada. Um, yeah. What? Let me explain contracted services because that's the uh, that's the big cost right there. The other stuff should be pretty, I don't know, self-explanatory, I suppose. Um, but it, here we have both the uh, Paul Hauser costs and, um, bear with me, we also incurred this year that uh, uh, canal study. Uh, what I had originally anticipated was that mm -hmm. there were going to be two studies done. One was for... Uh, erosion and the other one was for shorelines. So with Paul's $16,000 figure, he's up that this year. So I, I, at the time I budgeted for this, I didn't take that into account. I assumed his 16 and I assumed two studies each for 12,500 oh, to make okay. 25,000 to add to his 16 to come up with 41. And one study was on, uh, had to do with erosion. The other had to do with shorelines. And what we incurred this year was, I think we're done with it, um, the uh, canal evaluation study. Yeah. And uh, I don't think there's anything else in the offing. So you're not, we're not gonna hit that $41,000 number this year. The question then becomes what sort, of, what sort of studies you'd wanna do next year under contract, under, uh, by hiring a consultant, whether it's Paul or somebody else, and uh, you know, going from there. <laughs> Well, one of the one of the things I'd like to do is um, investigate this uh, leaf removal um, process, which may require some kind of study from somebody. The other thing is, uh, I'd like to do a deep dive on our lake chemistry, but I'm not sure if that's not already part of his scope of work. Paul's, I think it yeah. is. Yeah. So what I want to do is I'm going to focus on how we can uh, reverse or minimize our, our march toward a swamp. And we do a pretty good job of that, but I wanted to really get on top of it. That's why I was talking about the phosphate bags. You know, we, we, now, have, uh, we now have some telemetry, telemetry equipment in place that we might be able to collect uh, more, more data on the uh, on the pieces of uh, of the chemistry that are vital, so I, I guess I'd, I'd I'd like to leave it up to the board, the rest of the guys, if we need to put a place, we'll put something in here for uh, an additional study um, somewhere else, uh, you know, be of, above and beyond what we normally get from Paul. <coughs> I can't think of anything. Oh, Mike, you're here. Man. Yeah, I think there's something good for at least the, the next year until we get a better grasp as to what the results are from these studies. And I don't know if it's too much inside baseball, but it wouldn't be a bad idea. I don't think to talk to Paul about it. Um, he, he probably has a standard cafeteria of a uh, line of different uh, tests and whatnot that he does, but there may be something he could direct us toward that could be beneficial for the lake that we're not thinking about. So his his fee went up this year, right, Mike? It did. To? Oh, a function of, it was used, it used to be, it like instead 18, of four five? grand. Yeah, something like that. Four, seven, eight, eight. Yeah, eighteen five, I think. I mean, I, I may be wrong on that. Let me um, canal evade evaluation. He had a five thousand dollar downstroke, and he billed us for twenty five hundred. I think twice. Wow. So. Yeah, I think he's forty six twenty five a, a quarter. Uh, so. At times four, yeah, about eighteen five. Okay. 
So we should we go straight eighteen five guys, or you want to put a little money in there for a potential say, or we we can get back to Mike with some feedback from. Well, realize, Mike, I've I've got to come up with a number for next week. So, um, you know, the one thing I don't like to do is speculate. Like I right. like people say, you know, just in, in John Scott's immortal words, S W A G. Um, so, I mean, you know, if, if you're going to, are you going to deliberate on any of these matters at the official board meeting here pretty soon or no? Tonight, I meant. We, we or is could, this the time to kick that around? At the I mean, end of the day, I don't be, know if we have a number to put against it. So, yeah, I, I, I think that if, uh, you know, depending on what kind of study that you want to do, if you, if you want to do the erosion shoreline thing, as I said, we had those estimated at 12.5. Any other kind of a study, you know, based on this canal evaluation thing, is going to be somewhere in that vicinity. So, right. you know, kind of, kind of take that into account, and let's come up with a, well, at least a workable number there based on on okay. that. I'm going to put. I'm going to do this. Okay, and the store line restoration, to, it, it, it could be an erosion study if we continue down that path, or it could be this other process of looking in how do we get the leaves off of the, you know, off of the low spots. Um, That's good. I like, I like right. that kind of reasoning. Okay. Um, a couple of things that we talked about, but I don't know that we would ever come up with a, with a number about them. Might be the past the gate anyway. But we talked a little bit about having a lake safety fair. Would that right. fall under something that we'd fund, or is that something we'd go to the board and say, hey? Yeah, I think that's where we need to get down into the projects here because, you know, yeah. we want to we look at signage um, yeah. at, the, at, the, at the launch. We want to look at uh, um, QR uh, posts to maybe – you know, help folks find a way around the lake and find their fishing spots. Yep. Don't think that's going to be, a, that one's not going to be expensive. Um, Shouldn't be, no. And then I, I've been trying to get a hold of the chief to get an idea of it. Do we need to put a place holder in here? Do we need to put some sort of estimated cost of supplies when it comes to uh, Lake Safety Festival 2022? Mike, I think that's most appropriately in, under uh, board projects. If I can okay. jump ahead a little bit, sure. uh, first of all, sure. printing Absolutely. Print, publication, the only thing there, you don't see a cost there yet this year, but what I try and do is the village spring newsletter, which as you know, is mailed instead of uh, advertised. Um, that's going out this week. Uh, a certain portion of it is, uh, I think, water-related issues, various water-related issues, lake-related issues. Some of it's general fund stuff, some of it's park and rec stuff. So I kind of apportion the cost into these different cost centers. So about something less than a thousand is going to hit that printing and publication when I, uh, you know, run the uh, uh, May accounts. Now, let me just tell you what board project. So, I mean, that is what it is too. Under board projects this year, uh, based on input I had from, you know, go backward a year, there was an aeration study proposed to be done, a dredging aeration study for canals, $1,000 and a fish count of $1,500. That's your $2,500. That that's the entirety of the board projects. And none of those took place, obviously, so you don't see any expenditure there so far. But none of them are likely to take place, I wouldn't think, but based on the uh, where we're at in terms of the end of the fiscal year. I mean, there's less than two months to go. Right. I mean, if that's still on the table. Uh, well, you know, that's sort. now that's a good point. And on the fish count, um, we're going to pursue trying to get something done through the state, but not sure that that's going to happen. Well, let's leave it there as a placeholder. And I mean, um, if it doesn't, you know, I, I think most of the board feels that our fish count's really old and it's 12 years now, I think. It's either 12 or eight years, but it's old and, and we really don't know. I don't think we really know what's in the lake as compared to what we 
found out on the last study. Um, so that's kind of tied into the to the uh, to the fish stocking as well. But it was fish count. What was the other one? Thousand for what erosion? Well, it, my notes here say a dredging aeration study for canals, one thousand dollars. Fish count, fifteen hundred dollars. Well, the dredging thing, I think, is yeah. Past. I think that's taken care of. Right? That's past us. So yeah, um, didn't Paul include that with the aeration study he did for the canal this year? Yeah, yeah. Now, so I want to put some money in here for signage. Um, and I want to put some money in here for uh, safety uh, fair. Um, now, Mike, you realize too that uh, in fact, this June, I think we're going to be able to pull it off. We do have a boater safety class. In fact, we're going to try and fill two of them um, yes. right here on, on premise. And, um, yes. you know, obviously didn't do it last year. But um, usually that, that fills up. There's a there's a pretty good uh, pretty good turnout there. Right. Okay. Well, just want like to... as a as sort of a um, result of the tragedy that we had on the lake this yep. year, and we were talking to the chief, and a couple of years ago he had some kind of um, safety week, a lake lake safety week or whatever he called it. And we kind of thought that might not be a bad idea for us to uh, um, get back into. Um, yeah, just throw it, put it down there. Safety. We feel, we, you know, I just don't know what to put in there. Um, and then on the signage, you know, again, um, I don't have a number there, but. Well, let's leave 2,500 in there. Um, no Mike, full. Um, Which council one? just okay. priced out an electric sign, and it came to thirty grand for three lines. Yeah, thirty grand was the, the sign for the that we put on Glengarry, mm -hmm. approximate to the veter Veterans Memorial, mm -hmm. along the lines of the two signs we have uh, at, at Claire Miller Park and at uh, uh, the corner of South Commerce and Glengarry. I can't believe the sign that you're talking about is something like that, is it? No, well, the, the, I don't know what features and benefits make it thirty grand. You know, if it's something where it's the the electric, you know, if you do, you want the electric words? Yeah, but do, is that something that can be remotely programmed? If it is, that we don't need any. I mean, is that a feature that we? You know, I don't, I don't know. I'm looking online I, at these different uh, signs, and they're not thirty grand. And obviously, what you read in the, you know, what you read in advertisements isn't what you're going to get, but. Right. I don't know I mean, how you I, get the thirty grand. Well, that was what they priced out, I think, for Clara Miller. Yeah, and that should be easy yeah, enough that, to request um, from the village to get, see what they quoted exactly. Um, it may it may include right running electrical. Yeah, yeah, that, you know, that's, a, that's it, who a, knows that's what it is, it. but all that has to be taken into consideration. Mm -hmm. um, I do know a simple one line sign on a business of my friends was fifteen thousand. Just a simple one line that scrolled whatever was happening. Yeah. So I don't, I mean, and these have to be, you know, outdoor signs. Mm -hmm. So my only concern is, is if you do something electronic, it's very short wording that you put up there. So you're stuck standing there for a long time waiting to get the information. Well, versus... in, in that regard, uh, Kathy, I can uh, just say from our standpoint here, we've got software, desktop software that we can change the wording on that sign. You know, just like that with the snap, snap of the fingers. Yeah. Try to keep it current, um, but it's all programmable. It's all, you know, nobody has to go out there uh, and, and, and do anything at the site. It's it's all doable from, you know, uh, a laptop. Right. I'm not that. saying that, but like if, oh. if it's only one or two or three lines, the sign we have now has many more lines than that. Yeah. Right? It does. So then you're, then you're standing there waiting for the information you're looking for to scroll by. Is the only difference. Thinking about, uh, about getting a, like a computer monitor out there. Yeah. Yeah. And I was wondering about how robust those are when it comes to cold weather. Um, so Mike, I, not, not fair to you because we just don't know what, what, what the final number is here. 
my uh, advice maybe maybe what we do is go back to I, i'm not really crazy about having a uh, static sign and then talk to the village about putting some something on all these scrolling signs that we've already bought i mean maybe that's a good solution I and mean, you know at least how many do we have now mike two well, or three just two two okay so at least we could put them on those two and say hey you know no ice is safe ice yada yada whatever you know well some, I've, some public service announcement mike i sent you the thing where i've been talking to sunbright tv uh and that's an organization that specializes in outdoor signage and it's like they're like 60 inch flat screen program you show a movie on it you can do text. I don't know the cost. Uh, okay. We'd have to run electricity to it, but they're programmable. Um, so I don't know if that has an appeal or not. But oh, I, I'd love it if it survives the weather. You know, I think we can protect it from thievery and all the other things, but rain and you yeah. know, there, there's, uh, you know, there, there is, we would have to run, um, um, We'd have to run electricity, and that's going to be a cost. And maybe so, some climate control issues. With you're right, with a, Mike. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna put in ten grand that covers fish count, these QR posts, boat boat launch signage, and 2022 safety week. Um, just because I don't have a better number. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes that's uh, that's all you can do, Mike. And right. you know. You know, and, and maybe we find out that what we want to do at the launch is going to take two years and need to spread this out because it, we, what Mike, we don't want to do is do Mike, a half ass job. The boat launch is a DNR launch. Do we need to get permission from the DNR for this? Yes, I, I'm sure we do. And I'm okay. sure I, mean, I, can't, I can't see them so, telling us we can't do it. Well, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I know they're hard to get a hold of right now. Not all their stuff is up and running real well. It's still kind of on pause from all this COVID stuff. But, I, you know, I wouldn't worry about getting the signage taken care of in 21 or whatever this new fiscal year is called. I would plan it out because I think it'll take us a long time to do some research. Right, right. So I'm going to, I'm just going to put this under... Well, uh, oh, first of all, I got ten grand for for uh, projects, okay. And right now, I've got listed fish count, QR posts, boat launch signage. That may be static. They may be dynamic. That may not be this year. And then also, you know, twenty twenty two safety week. Um, and I'm trying to think. Does anybody else have any other um, identifiable? projects that are um uh, paul we're not incurring any kind of cost for the sewer set right no no that that's strictly a pass-through situation in the water okay, and sewer and that's funds. like one of our that's real one of our big things this year so i'm i'm looking at i'm just trying to see if there's anything else we might be missing as well, far as the, go ahead mike was was there some opportunity for the boat cleaning station was that a matching grant from D DEQ? Yeah, or? that's last time I, they still weren't doing it yet. That's what okay. I'm saying. Every time I contact them, they're not up and running for since because of COVID. Okay. That's that's much more of a that's going to have to be a long term thought. Okay. Well, I'm going to put it in here anyway, Kathy. It may not happen, but uh, um, I'm going to put it in here anyway. Just that's to, as very a reminder. Like um, what right. we have with uh, the, the canal stuff? What, what canal stuff exactly? I, well, I mean, we talked about it. I remember we had we just a couple of meetings ago, but I don't remember what we came up with as far think, as uh, putting the, the water. turning the Helmsford water on. Is that what you're talking about? Is that what is that what we kind of talked about? Well, we did talk about running the Helmsford pump down the canal for water flow, but the pump doesn't work. And right now, I'm not 100% sure if board approved to get that fixed yet. 
thought I was running. Council did not. You're making that recommendation or have made right. that recommendation. So it's on the docket for their consideration. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say, I haven't heard if they approved it. Now we're gonna talk about that issue at the regular meeting and that's the delay between when we make motions and when they get to council because of the two weeks that, that uh, Hannah has to get the, get the minutes in. So um, that's, um, and that's not on her, but that's just the contract that we have. So unfortunately, if we make a motion tonight, unless we um, manually get it to the, get it to uh, the village administrator, technically Hannah's minutes don't get up there until the next month's meeting. So we have like a, a, a month delay based on timing of our current meetings, but that's something I want to talk about during the meeting. And that is, do we, do we want to consider moving our meeting so we can not have this delay or do we want to Mike, go through this manual process? Mike, I, I got another suggestion too. Oh, good. Um, we, can, we can request council's meeting minutes be sent to us directly so that we can have a better idea of what they've decided or haven't decided. I know they're published on the website, but I never get to look at the website. I don't have time for that. Or, you know, okay. unless you guys are reading them. Is anyone else reading council's meeting minutes every month? Oh, no. Anybody look at them? No. Because that's what we need to happen because we don't get like a memo About that says, hours. hey, they answered your question. All right. Well, we can talk about that at, at the regular meeting. So um, is there any other? Okay. So I got 10 grand under board projects. I've got these identified here. Hopefully you can read it. Uh, does anybody have anything else they want to add to that? The only thing I'd uh, interject, um, or I'm sorry, if you're strictly talking about the projects, there's only one line item left and that has to do with conferences or training and things of that nature. So if there's, it, it's always nice to know going into the fiscal year what that might be. The only thing we expend there at the moment is um, I guess membership or dues for the Michigan Lakes and Streams Association. Right. Uh, I think that's the one you guys get a ma magazine out of every couple of months or something. So. Yeah, and we, we've been participating. I participated in the uh, MSLA conference, but that's virtual right now. Yep. Mike might have some cost uh, with uh, when it comes to the um, um, Huron Valley uh, watershed. But I think the fifteen hundred is 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 legitimate. The numbers are low because of COVID. That's my that's my take. I don't think there'll be anything coming out of the Huron uh, Watershed Council that wouldn't be covered by them. Um, so I can't think of anything to add to that either. Okay. All right. Anybody have anything else they want to add? Um, no, I think we're good. Yeah, me too. So when I, when I do my final take here, um, even at these numbers, we are 20,000, roughly 20,000 under last year. And a lot of that's the greenaway drain, but it is what it is. So um, we are, certainly not exceeding our budget from last year. Um, Mike, I really appreciate your time and uh, support here. Um, do you have any other comments you'd like to make before we- Just one, just so I put this in your um, uh, psyche there or in your, in your mind. We do also uh, pay dues to the uh, Huron River uh, Watershed Council for members of that. For whatever reason, that's historically been budgeted in a, as a uh, council uh, kind of conference and, and dues account, so it's not here. So if there's some repetition, you think, and, and being a member of both is not uh, fruitful, by all means, deliberate and let let well, me know or let us know. And one I of our one that. of our motions tonight is to uh, that Mike Mike be appointed to that to that uh, watershed council, but. Um, our council has to approve that. So uh, okay. whether it goes under our budget or their budget, you know, 
Well, that's a whole different deal, right? In yeah. other words, his appointment is is not an expense per se. I don't think. Right. No. Right. At least no, not anything. Not. All right. So I guess when it comes to what line that goes under, Mike, that probably should be just on you. <laughs> the con the here on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the here on river. We've already paid dues for this this uh, current fiscal year. We paid that in August for the year that ends. Uh, uh, June 30th, in this case, 2021, we'll get another bill, I assume, in August uh, for the 2022 dues. So we've been a member of that for years and years and years. Yeah, they were kind of happy to hear the, the hear from us, by the way. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, they were. Well, we're you, you, that, uh, a big part of the watershed. We are. We're a big spot on the watershed, and we're also at the head of the watershed, so... It's like we're, we're, what comes out of our lake goes all the way downhill. So we're at the head headwaters, we're not the, literally. We're not the source of it. Um, well, I the think on the river. creek side, we're anyway. We can talk about that later. Yeah. But bottom line is, yeah, we're a big spot on there, and they've done a lot of studies on uh, on our lake at the watershed. All right, you know, uh, Mike Hurst, the last thing I would say is I, I, from my standpoint, I really appreciate the proactivity. I appreciate the fact that, uh, you know, you're, you're looking at these things and not making, uh, uh, you know, stabs in the dark or whatever. These seem to be well thought out, well reasoned. Um, you know, having said that, whatever, whatever council decides, of course, they're the final arbiters of this, but at least we've got good data going in and defensible. Uh, rationales for the things that we're putting in there, and that's all you can do at this stage. And Mike, be sure to send me that spreadsheet tomorrow. I will send the, the spreadsheet, the Mike. Uh, I've made all the notes that I could think of, um, and that's good enough. I, I really appreciate your, uh, you know, your your focus on this, and I'm sure that your uh, input to the council as it means a lot to them as well as our success here. So thank you. Yeah, um, and one last thing. I'm sorry, Mike. Um, you know that nothing precludes anybody from attending that work session. So if uh, you know, you can rely on me to to sort of uh, uh, forward the rationales and so forth. But as far as uh, how can I put this, being on the soapbox and really being a proponent or fighting for something, it better come that better comes from you or someone on the board as opposed to you know me. And, uh, I didn't uh, real. I guess I didn't even think that that was open to everybody. But uh, oh yeah. All right. Well, then I'll probably plan on it on, on at least listening. Well, pencil it in two weeks from the twelfth, which would be the twenty-sixth. The usual time, seven o'clock. I'm sure. Well, we're, we're toying with the idea of making it in person, but I think all signs lead to uh, probably uh, a remote meeting. This was going to be kind of a, you know, I'm going to report back to Dave Gillum and, and Brian Edro and just say, you know, as, for an example, here's how it worked. With the water board. I think we did okay um so uh you know they'll, they'll make that decision forthwith okay Good. all right well guys, Thanks, guys i wanted to have a little break before we go into our seven o'clock meeting just take a breath here so uh does anybody have anything else to add about the uh um budget no 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 not. i hear a movement to adjourn i move we adjourn I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All righty. We'll see you guys at seven. Thank you, Mike. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. I don't know if I can figure out how to get myself out of this. <laughs> <laughs>